Hi, I'm Bill Osmolsky with the McIver Institute, and this is your McIver News Bulletin. The state capitol is in the thick of budget season, and the Joint Committee on Finance will be voting on individual sections of it over the next few weeks. But that hasn't stopped work on other hot button issues, including an ambitious package of pro-life legislation. One of the reasons why you have seen a call to action <laughs> is in regards to actions in, that have been taken in other states, where you have seen legislation either introduced or signed into law that essentially, in my opinion, is infanticide. And that's a, that's a huge concern for us. On Tuesday, lawmakers heard testimony on five separate pro-life bills at the Capitol. Those bills would include protections for infants that survive abortions, would prevent abortion clinics from receiving Medicaid funds, and ban abortions based on gender, disability, and other traits. Needless to say, the hearing room was packed for the better part of the day. I happen to be a pastor of a church. I speak to about 400 people every week. I have talked to dozens, if not hundreds, of women who have had abortions. I have yet to meet one that was happy to have had that procedure, but that's not my point. Many of them have felt coerced, either inside, outside, or somewhere in their life, to have this abortion. Many of them have told me over and over again, if I only would have known, I would never have done this. Uh, I really didn't think that we would come to the point in our country where in the public consciousness we would have individuals, albeit maybe at the fringes, um, advocating as was done by the governor of Virginia in the legislature in Virginia uh, that seek to allow for the termination of a life after it was born a survivor of a failed abortion. Some Republicans have described this as the abortionist executing a baby. Governor Evers told the Milwaukee Press Club last month that he finds that language offensive. Um, to say that doctors in the state of Wisconsin are executing babies is just uh, a blasphemy that, uh, and I, I, th I think of my, my own situation, my daughter's an OBGYN. If somebody said that she's, she had the opportunity to ex execute a child, that is, that is just a horrific thing to say. Of course, Governor Evers received support from Planned Parenthood during his campaign, and he's not the only one. There's also Representative Lisa Subek, who predicted a women's health crisis in rural Wisconsin if abortion clinics stop receiving Medicaid funding. So, you know, I'm frustrated to hear that you want to address this bigger issue of access to women's health care, because what I see here in this bill is actually diminishing access to women's health care. And in the past, when Republicans have passed bills that took money out of the pot for Planned Parenthood and other family planning providers, Women, clinics closed and women in some of our rural areas were left with nowhere to go. And I don't want to see that happen again. If you reference the handout included with my written testimony, you can see that Planned Parenthood facilities are concentrated in specific regions in our state, while there are 162 federally qualified health clinics and rural health clinics all around our state, serving a much larger percentage of our population. This hearing lasted for over four hours. The Republican-controlled legislature plans to move fast on these bills with an executive session scheduled before the end of the week. For more information on what's going on at the state capitol, especially while the budget debate unfolds, be sure to visit mciverinstitute.com and check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. For the McIver Institute, I'm Bill Osmolsky, and this has been your McIver News Bulletin.